Hey guys, this is Nick, and today I want to revisit my Linux at Work series. Back when I made those videos, it was 5 days at the office per week, and I was using my Huawei MateBook 13 running Elementor OS. Since then, the pandemic happened, I changed computers, I changed setups, I changed distros, basically everything is different, and I think it's gonna be interesting to see how I use now KDE-based distros at work, on my desktop, at home, and on my laptop in the office. Now speaking of working, there is no better way to get your virtual machines in order than using today's sponsor, QMU Care. So this video is sponsored by QMU Care. Usually when you manage QMU virtual machines and you have to update QMU itself, you have to do a lot of convoluted stuff. You have to grab all your VMs, move them to another host, then stop the host, patch QMU, then restart the host, then move all your VMs back again. So this consumes a lot of bandwidth. It's slow and complex, and the risk of making a mistake, like for example rebooting the wrong node and rebooting the host where you migrated all your VMs to, is high. It, it can create a lot of problems. So QMU Care eliminates literally all of these issues. You basically live patch QMU while your VMs are running. You have no virtual machine performance degradation, you have no bandwidth wasted, you have no risk of error, it's basically a way more simple solution to get QMU patched, having all the latest security updates without all the headaches that come with migrating your VMs to another host. So QMU Care is available as an add-on for Kernel Care Enterprise, and it's really inexpensive. So you can take a look at the link in the description below to see how you can apply that to your own virtual machine workflow based on QMU. Okay, so let's begin with what I do. For those who don't know, I'm a product owner, which means that I'm basically a specification writer, a tester, and a planner all at once. I have to organize our development sprints. I pick the issues and the projects that go into each sprint. I write the technical specifications and the functional specifications for these, which mean that the developers have a base to know how things are supposed to work. And I interact with our graphics designer to make sure that we have nice mockups and that the developers can reproduce them by coding. And I have a special message for Tanguy, that sweet graphics designer. Where are my subscribe search engine mockups, son? On top of that, I do a bit of graphics design myself. I have to test everything that the developers coded. And I also have to log in the bugs and test them, make sure that they are corrected if I didn't do my job correctly previously. Basically, it's a very versatile job, which means that I have to have a flexible setup focused on multitasking and easy access to a variety of applications. So the stuff that I use is divided into two parts. The first one is what I use from home when I'm working remotely three days a week. And the second part is what I use at the office when I'm working there two days a week. Let's begin with the stuff I use at home. So it's the same desktop I use to run the channel. It's my Slimbo Chimera desktop with a Ryzen 7 5800X CPU, an RTX 3070, 32 gigabytes of RAM and two terabytes of SSD. It's plugged into my LG 35-inch ultra-wide with a 1440p resolution and a 100Hz refresh rate. On top of that, I use an MX Master 2S and the Slimbook RGB keyboard. On that note, never buy this mouse in white. It gets gunked up super fast and it's really hard to restore it to its nice original white beige finish. The next time I'm buying a pure black one. The white one is not good. So basically, this desktop is way overkill for what I need to do at my day job but it's just right to let me edit videos comfortably and game on my free time, which I really don't have anymore because who knew that running a YouTube channel and having a day job at the same time was going to be so time consuming. Now in terms of software, the desktop runs Manjaro KDE. It's heavily customized. I use Latte Dock to add a dock at the bottom of the screen and a top panel with the applications menu, a global menu bar, the date and time and the indicators. I use the Edna theme for Quantum and Plasma with the inverse blue icons. And I switched my title bar buttons to have close and minimize on the left and maximize on the right. Now this layout is great on an ultra wide screen like this one. All my apps are centered on the dock, so they're super easy to reach. And the menu bar doesn't take space on each of my window. It's hidden on the top bar where I can just fling my mouse up and access it when I need to, which is very rarely. Notifications appear in the top right corner, which never covers what I'm doing, but still stays in my peripheral vision and lets me see if something happens. So the theme is really pleasant to use with subtle transparency and blur, dark but not pitch black, and it looks modern and original, I think. 
not that very original, honestly. I just grabbed that look and basically the layout from a Linux scoop video that I liked. I left the link in the description below if you want to replicate that and even go a little further. So that's the layout and look I use for work and for my own personal stuff, like the YouTube channel. So I do use two of KDE's activities. If you're not familiar with these, they're basically ensembles of virtual desktops which can have different wallpapers, different widgets, different power settings, different shortcuts. It's basically two entire different workspaces that you can use for work, for play, for whatever you want. So I have my play activity, which is the one I use when I'm working on the channel, when I'm gaming, or just doing regular unproductive stuff on the internet. And I have my work activity, where I do, well, all things related to my day job. On the play activity, I have a few widgets related to my computer's performance and the weather. I use these mostly to monitor if something goes wrong when I'm rendering a video or when I'm gaming. On the work activity, I have a less colorful, simpler wallpaper and different widgets. A color picker, because I use that a lot for my various graphics design tasks. A calculator, because I need to add things up quickly. And even though I use mostly the menu or K-Runner for that, I still like having that one here so I can keep the result visible. I have a network speed monitor to see if the website I'm testing is slow or if it's just my connection being saturated. And I have a sticky note widget to jot down a few things before I can actually enter them as issues or tasks. There's no desktop icons on either of these activities because, you know, they killed my dad. But if you wanted, you could have two different folder views, one for your play activity, one for your work activity. I learned to use activities a few weeks ago, and I've loved them ever since. They're super handy to make sure that you're not distracted, that you have the tools you need depending on what you're doing. Just a simple task of opening the activity switcher and moving to the work activity hides all applications that aren't supposed to appear here, and I can just focus on my work. It's just great. Now when I'm done working, I can just move back to my play activity and resume what I was doing before because I never close any of the apps that are open on any activity. Which means that the next morning, when I get back to working, I just move back to my work activity and pick up where I left off the previous day. I even map the switcher for activity to activity to the thumb button of my mouse, which means that in one click I can just switch from one workspace to the other, it's just super handy. No, I don't really use virtual desktops, but if I did, I could also have different set of them for each activity. You can also have a dedicated keyboard shortcut to change to a specific activity, define some power saving settings for each. And if you're sharing some telemetry data with the KDE team, you can even decide not to do so for one activity in particular. Now, I should probably do that on my torrenting porcupines activity. Now, this home setup is fantastic. It's where I like working the best. It's where I've got the best gear, the best mouse, the best keyboard, the best chair, the best office, the best place, basically the best computer. It's just great. And KDE has really helped my productivity a whole lot. Now, let's see what my office setup looks like. I use a Slimbook Pro X14, which is a fantastic laptop that I just got. It's decked out with my logo on the back and on the super key, and it has an 8-core Ryzen 7 4800H with integrated Vega graphics, 16GB of RAM, and 256GB of SSD. It's fast, it's responsive, it has about 6-7 to seven hours of battery life, and I can even play some games on my lunch break, which is a nice plus. The display is 1080p, which is just the right size for a 14-inch laptop, and it has really good viewing angles, and the computer also has a nice port selection, with three USB ports, an Ethernet jack, a full HDMI port, an audio jack, and a USB-C port. Now this gives it a lot of advantages over the MateBook 13. First, it's got double the RAM, which means I can use a lot more programs at the same time. Second, the MateBook 13 was 13-inch and had a 1440p display, which was an insane resolution for that size. And fractional scaling doesn't work great on x.org, I used Elementary OS, there is no fractional scaling there, which meant that my external display was 1080p, was way too big, and the laptop display was still way too small to be usable correctly. Basically, it solved that because now two of my screens are both 1080p. And third, I don't need any dongles. The laptop has all the ports that I need and I don't have to use that wobbly, finicky thing to plug anything and risk forgetting it, losing it. It's just way better without dongles. Now the laptop is plugged in into an external display, which is a basic Iyama 23-inch 1080p screen. And I use a super janky black USB mouse with an Apple Bluetooth keyboard. I have a few meetings from time to time, I can just unplug the USB mouse and the HDMI port and get going. In terms of hardware, the only issue that I have is that the mouse is wired, so it just adds a cable mess to my desk, and the keyboard isn't the same layout as the laptop, so I have to switch between them each time I go to a meeting or when I get back to my desk. 
In terms of software, the laptop runs KDE Neon. The layout is pretty much the box standard. I don't use LatiDoc here or a global menu. I want to have as much screen real estate as possible. And since I very rarely use the menu bar anyway, and mostly use one window at a time, one on each monitor, I'm not bothered by the fact that apps have menu bars in KDE. The theme is just Breeze Dock, which I kinda like, but I might change it for Edna in the future to be more coherent with my desktop. Here I also have activity set up, but I spend most of my time on the work activity. It has the same widgets as on the desktop, although the play activity has no widgets at all. I don't even have a specific keyboard shortcut setup here, as I very rarely move to the play activity, except on my lunch break for about an hour maximum. Or that's what my boss thinks. So I have still moved the title bar buttons to the same config that I use on my desktop, with the close and minimize on the left and maximize on the right. Now there is one issue that I have with KDE on the laptop that I do not have on the desktop, and that's the lack of touchpad gestures. Elementary OS 6 has them, GNOME has them. KDE is the last major desktop environment to not have gestures, not even janky gestures that are not one-to-one -one like on GNOME or Elementary OS. And second, you have so many options in KDE that you could map to these gestures, it's infuriating. Give gestures soon, please. Now the other drawback is that I use the default KDE layout on that laptop and people think I use Windows, which is frankly humiliating. Now this is just how I set up my computers to use KDE and the various layouts that I use. There is a lot more to tell, especially about the applications that I use, because I don't use the same ones at the office and when I'm working from home. So there's gonna be another video about that pretty soon, stay tuned for this. In the end, working with KDE took a bit of time, as the default layout just didn't really work on an ultra-wide monitor like I have. Once I found Latte Dock and the way I could set it up, which is basically like a macOS layout, it works way better for me and for my task. And once I learned to use the activities, my productivity just skyrocketed, I, it just clicked. And I learned to love KDE for what it is, and I really super comfortable with it to the point that when Elementary OS 6 releases I was planning to move back to it but maybe I now won't be. Now I will still definitely give Elementary OS a fair shake when it releases and there is probably a using GNOME for 30 days experiment just like I did for KDE. Maybe I'll fall in love back with one of these desktops. But for now KDE is kind of the king for me. Now stay tuned for all these video projects and especially for the one where I'll detail all the applications that I use to get my work done, to play around on my laptop, on my desktop. It's gonna be an interesting one and it's gonna be coming soon. This video was made possible by Slimbook because they're a partner of the channel. If you need a Linux pre-installed device, whether it's a desktop, a laptop, whatever your budget, wherever you live, whatever keyboard layout that you need, check these guys out. I only use their stuff these days as you saw in this video and I can only recommend them. So just click the link in the description below and look at their devices. There's something for you in there. And that concludes it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't hesitate to like and subscribe. And if you didn't enjoy it, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments. Now you can also watch all my videos on Odyssey if you don't like YouTube and if you want to help me turn this into a full-time gig, then you can join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members. You'll get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote for the next topics I'll cover for just $1 a month. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!